So for these questions, we're actually going to talk about um, evolution and uh, things which things which are done to encourage, uh, you know, to encourage diversity as well as things that can limit diversity. This first question: Which process tends to reduce variety within a population? So when you're thinking about reducing a variety, you have to think about you know uh, organisms dying, and you have to think about death. I guess it's a bit morbid, but you have to think about death. So a natural selection. The natural selection is where the uh, so say if an organism has a uh, a positive characteristic. So say you know say for giraffes, so the giraffe which had a longer neck had a, had a positive characteristic which allowed it to um, successfully thrive and breed, and therefore nature selected it because of its long neck. So this would induce, indeed reduce variety. So this is correct. Um, and that's because that uh, natural selection would kill off the other individuals who didn't show a long neck, for example, in the giraffe population. So you're actually getting rid of the variety so that uh, the, the, the giraffes that only have long necks are the only individuals in the population. So that is indeed correct. Most likely our correct answer, but let's look at the other ones. Random fertilization. No, that's incorrect. Because random fertilization and actually all these other ones, um, independent assortment um, as well as crossing over, what they do is that they actually promote um, a variation. So you might recognize that these are all parts of sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction. And the important thing about sexual reproduction is that it causes um, an increase in variation in the subsequent offspring. Um, so yeah, these three are all about uh, variation. And the one above is about uh, decrease variation. Okay, good. First question. Second question, which of the following are used as evidence for evolution? So, one, two, three, homologous structures. So when you think about homologous, you have to think, remember how we were talking about homologous chromosomes as well? Well, homologous structures means that they are structures which are similar, in, uh, structures which are similar in nature, but are not exactly the same. So, for example, if you had a dog and you had a wolf, and they both had the same kind of thigh bone or femur, then that would be a homologous structure. So yes, that would be an evidence for evolution. How about selective breeding of domesticated animals? So yes, that would be an evidence for evolution as well, because if you selectively bred them, you might get, uh, say for example, you had the, the poodle, and the poodle initially, the poodle ancestors, they might not have been that fluffy, they might have been quite um, you know, big, not as small as the ones that we have now. And the more that you breed them, then the more that you can turn them into something which is similar to the ancestor of the poodle, but um, it has the desired characteristics that you wanted, whether that be you know, less, uh, more fluffy, fluffiness or a smaller size, etc. So yes. How about three? Overproduction of offspring. Now that's just a red herring answer as well. That doesn't really have anything to do evidence for evolution, so I'm going to straight away get rid of that. So one and two only is A. Question three. Which of the following will promote variation in a species? So luckily, if you looked at the question one prior, um, we talked about things that did cause uh, variation. And remember, when you think of variation, you have to think of birth. When you think about increasing variation, you think of birth and sexual reproduction. When you're thinking about decrease in variation, you have to think about death or natural selection, okay? So which ones of these are to do with birth? So meiosis, yep, absolutely correct. Fertilization, yep, absolutely correct. Um, three, natural selection, no, that's not correct, because that's actually the opposite. That's to do with decreasing variation. So one and two, correct, therefore it's C. Question number four, why has antibiotic resistance evolved in bacteria? Okay, so we're talking a bit about um, evolution here again in the example of bacteria. And some of these statements might be correct, but they're not, they won't answer the question. Very important that you answer the question as well. So all bacteria reproduce very quickly. So that's a typical example. Yep, they do reproduce very quickly. However, is that the reason why bacterial resistance, uh, antibiotic resistance evolved? So no, it's not, so it's not that one. B. Bacteria exposed to antibiotics develop a resistance to them. This might seem correct on the surface, but this is actually incorrect as well. And here's why. The reason what they're saying, what they're saying here is that, say if you had bacteria A, 
So we've got, um, say we've got uh, Bobby the blue bacteria here, yeah? And, um, you know, here's, here's naked DNA inside there. And um, what they're saying is that initially he wasn't resistant, but then later, after being exposed, he did become resistant. And that's actually incorrect, because remember that with antibiotic resistance, what initially happens is that you have a population of, of bacteria. The ones which aren't resistant, resistant are killed off, and only the ones which are resistant are left. So it's a kind of selection. So the ones which have this resistance are selected for, and they continue to grow, and they're allowed to reproduce. So it's actually incorrect, this answer here. How about C? Varieties of bacteria resistant to antibiotics re reproduce faster than non-resistant varieties. Yeah, so once again, this is not really correct as well, because they don't reproduce faster. It's not about reproducing faster, it's the fact that these ones that are resistant, they can survive. It doesn't matter how fast these ones can, uh, reproduce, because they can reproduce a million times and they'll all get killed off by the, by the antibiotics. So it's not C. So the correct answer, correct, you guessed it, is D. Bacteria showing resistance to antibiotics survive after antibiotics are used. That is the correct answer. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out. Just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.